You betcha, I'm George and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about IPD for Quest 3. If you find anything useful in this video, please consider subscribing because that's the best way you can support me. IPD is interpupillary distance. It's essentially the distance between the center of each of your eyes. The pupil is the black part of your eye and that's the center that we're going to be measuring. Using a correct IPD in VR is important because using an incorrect IPD can cause eye fatigue and our eyes are our main sensory organ so it is very important that you take care of them. We're already staring at a very close lens for long periods of time, maybe even hours if you play as long as I do. Doctors recommend having only 20 minutes at a time and then you take a 20 second break where you look 20 feet away but if we're not doing that in VR, plus we're using an incorrect IPD, that's only adding to the strain against your eyes and you want to minimize that as much as possible. That's why you want to use the correct IPD for your eye. And in VR games, it'll actually give a 3D effect to what you're looking at if you are using the correct IPD. I have the original Quest back here and it had an IPD range of 56 millimeters to 74 millimeters. It has a mechanical IPD adjustment compared to the Oculus Rift S, which had a software IPD adjustment. That was much more difficult on people's eyes because where the lens actually lined up didn't move. It just tried to adjust for that in software and it did a poor job at that. So that's why when the move to the mechanical IPD really benefited the company and helped a lot of people use that headset. Going to the Quest 2, it has three IPD slots, 58, 63, and 68. And it's still mechanical, but because it's not fully the range and it's only three different sections that you can move it to, and if you fall in the middle of one of those ranges, then you're more likely to have more eye fatigue. The Quest 3 luckily went back to a full IPD adjustment where you can turn this dial on the bottom to actually choose exactly within the range of IPD. But its range was 53 millimeters to 75 millimeters, which is three millimeters larger on the low end and one millimeter larger on the high end, which is great that they went back to this. Now let's talk about measuring your IPD. You can use an app, but I found that those aren't always accurate. They use a single point of reference, which is more of like using a V to try and measure, to tr try and interpolate and guesstimate where your IPD and what the length is versus what we're going to be using is more of a parallel measurement. So we're not going to be guessing as much. And I found that other apps, like if you've ever used iPhones measure, those are close but they're usually sometimes off by quite a bit so I'd use those at your own risk. If you have a tape measure around the house and you should have a tape measure around and some sort of toolbox if you don't already but if you do I will warn about this metal piece at the end because sometimes they're not exactly on zero. That's why carpenters or other people that do woodwork will generally always try use the same measuring tape so that their cuts and everything they do is consistent, if not exactly perfectly accurate. If you do use a measure tape, I just recommend starting at maybe like 100 millimeters so that you have a more accurate measurement. What I'm gonna be using is a ruler. So this ruler has millimeters on one side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to Hold it up to my face. You want to get it about as close as possible. Take off your glasses if you're able. And then I'm going to close the eye that's not on zero. So also make sure that you're using a mirror and not an iPhone camera to do this so that you do have that parallel measurement versus you're going to get that V one reference point if you're using a iPhone camera. So what you do is you close your eye that's not on zero, and then you get it as close as to the middle of your pupil as possible, and then you switch eyes, and then you see what it's at. And mine is about 64 millimeters, and I do that a couple times just to make sure that you didn't move it and you have it right. And one more thing you can also do is you can measure your pupil 
to the middle of your nose and that will give you your IPD for each eye. A lot of people, most people actually, don't have the same IPD on both sides. I'm lucky, my doctors told me multiple times that my IPD is symmetrical, which is extremely rare. So if, you, if your IPD is off a little bit, that's still good to know. Maybe that means that you're gonna position your headset a little bit to one side of your face. Meta and the Quests do not support individual IPD adjustments per eye yet. It's kind of funny that they don't because of how common that is, but it's still really good information to know. The last way that you can measure IPD is by talking to your optometrists. They can give you exactly what your IPD is for each eye and your total IPD between them using more scientific tools and methods. But that's gonna take a lot longer, especially if you only go to the optometrist every two years. Another thing to mention is that before I really knew much about IPD, I'd do stuff with like binoculars where I would put them all the way together because I would think the circles would need to, to overlap, but that's not true. You just need the, the, the lenses to line up with the middle of your eyes. They don't need to overlap. That's not how they work, even though it kind of makes sense it looks like it would make sense because it's all about just getting a clear picture that's parallel with your eyes. Now that you know how to measure your IPD, I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please consider subscribing. You can leave a like, a comment. And until next time, I've been George. Peace out.